All right, so good evening, everyone. We'll call this meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Verification of a quorum. <clears throat> oh, verification of public notice. This meeting has been publicly noticed. Verification of a quorum. We have six of our seven board members currently here. Um, would someone like to, I would like to ask for the approval of the agenda with flexibility this evening, if someone can make that motion. Um, Ms. Robinson, I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda with flexibility. Thank you very much, Ms. Mason. Can I get a second? I will second that. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. All in favor with aye? Aye. 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 All right. Ayes have it. Supposed to do. Motion is approved. Next is our uh, vision and mission statement. Our vision to provide a rigorous education that empowers our students to confidently navigate in our ever-changing world. And our mission is through the lens of excellence, equity, and engagement. We are dedicated to empowering every student with the essential skills to build a foundation of lifelong learning. All right, up next is our district administrator's report. Uh, Dr. Brown is not in today, so we will table her report um, for our next meeting. Public comments. Uh, we are allowing for public comments at tonight's meeting. So if there's anyone online or in person who would like to make a public comment, uh, you are able to participate by making a comment of three minutes or less. Um, about an item that is on our agenda for this evening. And we just ask that you state your name and your address and whether or not you have students in the district and then you are able to make public comment. So I will give a little bit of a break for anyone to identify themselves if they are wanting to make public comments this evening. Now would be the time to let us know. So while we're waiting for those public comments, I know that we have a few activities for our students coming up in state tournaments and things of that nature. Um, we got bowling this weekend, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, this bowling state. Friday night is singles. We have three bowlers and singles. And then Saturday, we're in the team event as well. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, our girls got knocked out of the playoffs for basketball last weekend. Mm -hmm. So... That's unfortunate to hear. And I think we had uh, wrestling. He took, took second. Maximus Hay took second in the 120. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he made it to TV. Lost four to three. Right at the end, he lost it, but uh, great. It was great. Great effort. Yeah, our kids have been doing some great things academically, athletically, all around mm -hmm. the district. All right, so I don't have anyone uh, identifying themselves for public comments, so we will continue on at this time. Um, next is the consent agenda. I'd like to get a motion to approve the consent agenda. Madam Vice Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda including the minutes of January 9th, 2024, special board meeting, January 23rd, 2024, regular board meeting, the schedule of voucher payments via check, ACH, and wire transfers in the amount of $1,626,944.19. In the general checking account, in the food service accounts, including funds 10, 21, 27, 39, 47, 49, 50, 72, and 80, and the February 27, 2024 school safety drill update as presented tonight. Thank you very much, Ms. Hills. Ashley, can I get a second, please? Second. All right, thank you, Ms. Micah, for the second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor with aye? Aye. Ayes have it, six to zero. Thank you very much. 
Um, moving on now to items for discussion, consideration, a possible board action, starting with a business office report. Good evening, members of the board and members of the public online. Uh, a few quick items as part of our business office uh, report this uh, this meeting. Um, first, just to let the board know, um, this is an important thing just to let you know that I remember and it's getting done. Uh, we do have our March debt service payment, which is happening um, probably getting transferred tomorrow in advance of March 1st. But um, we'll be wiring just over two and a half million dollars um, as part of our 2024 payments. Um, that will uh, include $1.94 million in principal that will reduce our um, overall uh, indebtedness to $33.5 million when that is over with. Um, and then our next bond payment is um, September 1st, and that'll be interest only. So, um, and just as a piece of information to the board, we do, uh, we do this twice a year. We do the March and the September payments. Um, and uh, we, when we calculate the um, debt service levy and we budget for debt service, they're on different calendars. One uses the fiscal year, one uses the calendar year. So you, you'll you always see a little bit of an offset on that. So as an example, the, the levy that we that you approved in October covers this March and this September's um, payments. But the budget, when we do the budget and when you look at what the expenses are for payments, it's actually last September and this March. That's part of the 23-24 fiscal year. So there's always a little bit of an offset. Um, just wanted to share that with you so that if you ever look at that and wonder why they don't line up. So the levy number exactly matches what the expenses are in the budget because they're dealing with different kinds of page. But, um, but we're, we're all set to go on that. And again, that will be done, um, like I said, probably done tomorrow in advance of, of March 1st. Um, next up, uh, we are again in the, in the middle of our food service um, RFP uh, that again was issued back on February 12th. Um, we have our site visit for interested vendors coming up on Monday um, that will start at 11 o'clock and they'll tour both the middle school and the high school cafeteria areas and watch um, lunch services. Um, and uh, I know in the memo I mentioned there were two firms. I had two more reach out with some of the pre-site um, questions that they want to ask. So as of now, I believe we'll have at least four um, vendors show up. So um that will be good just to have some options as we as we go through. So again, we'll have the site visits uh, on Monday. Um, there's a few other um, opportunities for questions to be answered, and then the uh, proposals will do on April second, and then you guys will vote on the final selection of our little food service committee at the April business board meeting. Um, and then uh, we have brought back the treasurer's report. Um, after a small delay, it just takes a while to get things in um, Skyward as well as to make sure that um, their numbers have any value to you to, to review. So the um, the treasurer's report is uh, available for review, funds 10 and fund 27. I did notice, uh, I did note just a couple of things in the uh, in the memo. Um, one is that obviously our fund 10 revenue is, is very low at this point. Um, we, uh, we did receive, we've now received two tax payments. Um, from the village to the person was on January 15th um, because of the amount of that. And, and what happens is they take a, um, a prorated portion of whatever is, is um, received by the village the month before. So um, if our percentage of the, as an example, our percentage of the total tax bill is 25% then whatever the village takes in, we get 25% of that. And then they send that to us. So it's always a little bit, um, it varies from year to year. And uh, because the first payment was less than what our fund 39 levy is, we just put it all in fund 39. So you don't see anything in fund 10. Uh, the February, when you see our one next month, uh, when you see the February um, 29th uh, state, our uh, treasurer's report, then you will see money that some of it will have gone into fund 39 to finish up that levy, and then the rest goes to fund 10. So you're going to start to see more revenue starting to come. Um, just another little uh, quirkiness with how the levies work. Um, we do have then multiple more payments that will be made by the village um, again in, in April, in June, and in August. Uh, to finish up the, the tax levy. Um, we're also just now beginning to get through the payment process on some of our federal funding. So um, you'll start to see that revenue come in. So again, that's um, it's, uh, a, a low point in revenue, but again, we're gonna be seeing more of that coming in very shortly. So uh, that will um, uh, that'll be noted in future reports. Um, right now, again, um, in addition to the treasury report, I have another way of tracking expenses where I can connect things out. And I would say so far, we are still looking very positively uh, overall for expenses and if, you know compare year to year you're seeing very similar percentages so we are in a good place um the one thing i did want to bring up to you because kathy and i are working with the auditors on this is there is the item of uh, the copier lease item the one that's uh 
Fun 10, uh, Object 322. Um, it's because of the way that auditors make us um, expense the leases for the full year. And so it looks like it's 200% of budget, but it's not really. I mean, we're, we're fine there, but it is a I mean, we're trying to see if there's a accounting that makes sense or if we should ex not exclude it, but how we explain that or just, you know, better um, better represent that in the report so you don't feel like it, you know, that line is. So they make you show the whole cost. Of the whole cost, right. They don't um, capitalize it and allow you to depreciate it down. Well, I, I have to, I have to review with that exactly what that, what that um, uh, adjustment was. That's why I feel like that and I got it and hopefully we'll have it uh, more clear to us if, if if you have changed, Gatsby has changed some of the rules on how you deal with some of the yes. long term leases. So yeah. just make yeah, good. Because I oversee it and trying to figure out, because Kathy has to do use the formula, like a depreciation yeah. formula and stuff. So I'm just paying it. I, you yeah, know, yeah. Normally, like our monthly thing, I yes. let her know she's got my spreadsheet where I kind of capitalize everything in terms of the budgets and the yes. expenditures. And then she'll do her magic on the other end when she okay. haven't decided what that is. But, uh, we yeah. do look, I mean, the expense part is correct. I and mean, we are, we're still. Well, yeah, you're there. definitely paying okay. what you're yeah. expensing. Perfect. But typically with those type of expenses, they allow you to capitalize it and then depreciate it down over the years of useful life is what it's called. So, yeah. Oh, that was the only one that really stuck out to me as a, as a, as a big switch. And then, um, again, we do also include the cash flow update on the last page to show you where we are. We're at the January 31st. Um, you saw where our low point um, occurs, which is right around November 30th, uh, that payroll. And then early December, we get our first multi-million dollar equalization aid payment, which basically puts us in, you know, out of any kind of um, short-term or any kind of deficit danger in that, uh, just outside of that window. So we should be in good shape for cash flow from here on out. So even including the, uh, two and a half million dollars. We just sent it over to Dave. Dave mm -hmm. so, uh, are there any questions outside of what I mentioned on the treasury report, or anything else that we? Uh... Okay, that is all from our reports. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Up next is approval of the Semitrons quote for Brown Deer Elementary, uh, Mr. Ross. Good evening, board. Um, I um, I'm asking for the board to approve um, the two quotes from Sonatrol. One is for the uh, administration building for the um, security updates for the doors and also the one for the elementary school. Um, the reason why I'm asking for the board to approve this uh, currently is because um, I was brought, it was brought to my attention by our representative for Sonatrols that as of March 1st, they're having a price increase, which means that everything that we have budgeted for this would actually go up, which means we would have to re reintroduce this to the grant writers and everything else. So to ease that pain of not doing that, we we're asking to have you guys approve this, whether whether or not we are um, going to do it this year or not. They said it's good for up to a year, so we would have between now and uh, next year to complete these tasks. Um, the grand total is $25,695 uh, between the two buildings. All right, so I, I have a question for you, um, Mr. Uh, trying to see where is the sheet here. <laughs> On the executive summary, it mentioned that this is for the middle and high school? No, we, we already are doing currently doing the middle high school. Okay. And this is just the rest of the pool for the grant, for the COPS grant. Okay. I, I was just a little confused because the summary does not mention the elementary school or the ASC. It just has the attachments for those locations. I do apologize, sir. It, it, yeah. It's right, like right under the agenda recommendations, the approval of the quote for security updates for both the elementary school and the administration building. Is that what you're looking for? It's right under the agenda. Is item is four? No. Okay. I don't. Uh, and his executive summary right here. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yes. that's what she's looking for. It's written right there, right here, underneath the, <laughs> the lines, right at the very top where it says recommendation. Oh, that's interesting. 
Okay, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm just saying in the explanation. Yeah, I, I, I do apologize. I was, um, when I wrote this, uh, I mm -hmm. didn't realize that some of it got cut out. <laughs> okay. So that, that would be that would be my apologies. Okay. Yes, you did approve the middle school. Um, yeah, the middle high school, school was already approved. As a matter of fact, they are currently doing that. And that's going to be part of my safety update. Okay. Got it. All right. I, I just wanted to think in the midst of that conversation, I got my answer. So this is all being covered under the grant minus the 25% right. that we have to pay out of pocket. That is is right. the 25% included in our budget? It is. Well, it's, um, we will be handling That's where we were going to talk about that. We may not do it right away. Maybe something that slides open as we were, as we are finalizing this year and kind of see how much, you know, uh, we have available, whether it makes sense to do it this year or it be. Okay. That sounds good. I would anticipate, though, it'll be done before, I'm going to guess, before the school year starts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Any other questions for Ms. Dora? No. All right. Ms. Peterson, if you get a motion. Yes, um, I would like to make a motion to approve the Central Security Quote for Security Updates for the Brown Deer Elementary School (BDE) and Administration Services Center (ASC) in an amount not to exceed twenty-five thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Peterson. I get a second. I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor with aye? Aye. aye. All right, ayes have it. Motion approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Next up is the 24-25 budget update. I don't actually have much for that tonight. Uh, part of that will be based on the conversation we're going to have later on in closed session, um, so we can discuss it then. And that will uh, these discussions are going to drive where we are going forward. So our future budget update meetings will have more uh, teeth to them once we get to of the personnel questions. All right, very good. Thank you. But I will say again that the twenty three twenty four budget is still tracking well. Um, I'll also. I'll remind you that I um, the budget expenses, and so I'm, and I actually am probably going to. I, actually, I will. I will be presenting you a revised budget at some point, probably in April or May, just to kind of um, solidify where our savings have been and you know, effort to be a little more transparent. But um, we are at a point where um, the two hundred forty-one thousand dollars that we are putting back in the fund balance for um, the tax uh, the tax uh, chargeback. Um, that's not included in the expenses. So if we come in at our budget and expenses, that money will still be there for a surplus. So we're looking at money, a dollars in addition to that. Right now, I'm talking about as a surplus. So it is still trending very positive. All right, very good. Next, a full new hire. We do have one new hire this evening. Um, we would like the board to approve the hiring of Jennifer Tracy as our new K-12 literacy coordinator. Um, she was replacing uh, Dr. Stacy Gray. That's it. Um, can I get a motion, please, for approval? I'll make a motion to approve the hiring of Jennifer Tracy as the K-12 Literacy Coordinator for the 2023-24 school year. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Second, please. Second. Thank you, Ms. Vick. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Will I? Uh, all right, all right. Yeah. motion carried six to zero. We welcome Jennifer Tracy as our K-12 literacy coordinator. Up next, uh, approval of resignations. We have no resignation. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, next is our safety updates. Um, so I wanted to um, just give you guys a brief update what we've done in, in February and in March thus far, as far as our safety is concerned. Um, back in February, we had um, part, uh, at the beginning part of February, end of January, we had the eighth grade hallway um, 
the protective glass coating that was done in the eighth grade only that was uh, in the uh, for all the blooms going in the house. Um, then we also have uh, currently we have the Sonatrol security company uh, doing the uh, door alarms and the door pop access in and out of the buildings. Uh, they just started that uh, this week. Um, so it'll be about two to three weeks before they're done. And we can then uh, utilize what we've been asked, asked them to install. Um, that's pretty much a brief update. We've, uh, we've done some safety meetings um, as far as in regards to the reunification process um, on February, February 20th. We had a meeting during um, our PL day um, in which we had uh, me, Kevin, Kara, and Officer Oleg, and the rest of the safety team uh, talking about the reunification process. Um, and we'll be doing that again in March as well, hoping to finalize something before that middle school year. All right, very good. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, if I can just add real quick, just because we have a number of people on online just to, to talk about the sound troll thing, just as a reminder, because as, as members of the public um, are visiting our, our campus, uh, they will need to understand that there is going to be a change in process and policy going forward, that we will have alarms on all of our exterior doors or all around campus, and they will sound when they're not open for particular events. Obviously, for Basketball games, the field house doors won't, won't be in that situation, but other doors throughout the campus will be, and they'll be identified, you know, that emergency exit only, or it'll be, um, you know, you have to have a fob in order to open or close the door. So there's going to be a learning curve with our students, with our staff, with the community members. Just so you just can't walk out of any door or prop any door open or anything like that. It, you know, we're trying to improve that safety piece. And um, so we're just trying to start getting the word out that that is going to be a thing that when visitors come to our buildings, um, obviously, during big events, we'll be, you know, we'll have certain doors that will will be um, will be exited. We will be able to exit without an alarm going off. But um, in other cases, some of the eggs for people may have left outside doors and things like that. That will trigger an alarm um, that will draw attention. So we're just trying to improve the the safety of the whole building envelope and making sure that our doors are secure at all times. And that's just going to be a, a process for the community to kind of. Um, uh, adapt to as we go forward. So we'll make sure we publicize that as once things become active. Right, yeah. okay. So then will signage be at all the doors yeah. as well? There will be signage. And then um, is it an alarm that goes off until it's deactivated? Or no, it it'll, it'll go off for a certain time frame. Okay. Um, each each one will be programmed a little differently according to where where the location is. Okay. Um, but um, Majority of the doors will have a alarm that goes off for a certain amount of time, whether it be 30 seconds, 10 seconds, uh, could be up to a minute if we really wanted it to. Um, and then once the alarm is done, then it'll just shut off. Okay. Well, is there a monitoring system that'll show a door? Well, um, Prospective people who will get uh, either a text message or a phone call or both. Okay. Um, allowing um, whatever is security that they or administration to go to that door. At all. For example, door 27, which is our field house doors, if someone exits that, it'll someone will send a text message or it'll get a phone call saying, hey, someone exited door 27 and did not pop out. Okay. So then at that point in time, we can go investigate, and then we have a timestamp of when uh, we can take a look at the camera systems as well. Okay. I have a quick question. So we do securities for once for the middle high school, and we do Sonatrol? We use Sonatrol for everything. Okay, so we don't do securities anymore? No. All right, any other questions? All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Rust. 
Uh, next is the new superintendent search update. We will uh, defer that until Dr. Beadle is able to join us. So um, we'll come back up to that item. So next is approval of the 24-25 board calendar. Board, have you all had the opportunity to take a look at the dates on the calendar? And if so, any questions that any of you may have? Y'all good on the dates we see there? I'd like to draw your attention though to um, April of 2025. Um, the, uh, I don't know how you want to handle this, but the legal um, point when uh, an elected official becomes a school board member is the fourth Monday in April. That's the state statute. So right now your meeting scheduled on the 22nd is not after the fourth Monday. Um, so you would either have to have that be just a, it'd be a meeting with the current with the board that gets in, a, in this April, the same board on that meeting, you'd have to schedule an organizational meeting in a different way, which could be either um, you could do it a week or you could schedule a, do an organizational meeting the first meeting you do in May. Um, you have that option. You have so many days after the uh, after that fourth Monday to have your meeting. So it just depends on if you want to keep the 22nd as your business meeting, or if you want to move to the 29th, because then you can do it the next day. You just wouldn't be able to do the organization meeting until you had all your members. It's it's a the one unique time where because the first is a Tuesday that the, the fourth Tuesday falls after the falls before the fourth Monday. Gotcha. Um, okay, so oh, I'm sorry. What do I need to do? Me now. Could you clarify again? I came in at the tail end or whatever. So, so right now, April uh, in April of 2025, you have the the fourth Tuesday is April 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the board calendar piece. Yeah. Okay. So the fourth Tuesday is April 22nd. However, the fourth Monday, which is when elected board members, newly elected board members, get to be seated as board members, would be the 28th. The fourth Monday because it's the first and Tuesday. So it's it's they're out of order that year. So. You would, you would not be able to do the organizational meeting on the 22nd because you don't have your board seated. You would either have to move that meeting to the 29th, which you could do, or you could just delay the organizational meeting until the first meeting in May of 2020. And then your the board, the, the new board on the next year's board would, would all be there on that fourth Monday in April as well. Or the fourth Tuesday, twenty second. They'd all your normal board would meet. That would be the last board meeting for people. For everybody, even though the new board members actually technically uh, the election is the right, but they don't get seated. They're not. They're but not, they're not there until the following meet to the, the uh, fourth Monday. Yeah, the twenty eighth. Yeah, the statute. The statute say you're you become a board member on the fourth Monday of April. Right. So whenever meet whenever you your organization meeting has to be after that. Okay. So okay, so members that are coming off. You guys, it's not, it's not even. It's a year from now, so it's even. Oh, here, okay. Year. I'm sitting there looking because I'm looking at this one count. And I was like, yeah. Hey, that day you're talking about is a Wednesday. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Wednesday. It's not this. It's okay, not, it's not this year. It'll be right. the okay. end of the best board calendar for. The okay. Year. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. So, I mean, I, I was looking to see when was Easter weekend, which Easter is on the twentieth. Next year, so April on the 29th, might be the twentieth of April. Yeah. So. yeah, so if you did move it to the 29th, that would then you'd be mm -hmm. you could seat everybody and just do it as normal. I even know when. What would be a better harm if you move it to the 29th? Right I don't now. think there's harm, no, especially a year in advance. No. Right, you should move it because we could move it out to the 29th. Yeah, you can yeah. just move yeah. it. Yeah, it's always all over the year. Yeah. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Kevin. No problem. Yeah, just one of those things. All right. So um, we won't October tonight, man. We can. You can. Yeah. With, that that with, with, the, with the date change. Okay. Yeah. All right. So is that all then that we want to change? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. So All right, so I have to get a motion to approve with the change discussed. Changing the meeting to that 29th? Yeah. Yep, changing it to the 29th. To so April 29th, 2025. 
can sign a trade motion to approve the 2024 25 board calendars with the amended date of April 29th, 2025, as organizational board meeting versus the 26th. All right, thank you, Ms. Zick. Uh, second. I'll second. second. I'll second. All right. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Motion carries seven to zero. Dr. Zito, I will hand the gavel to you. Oh, thank you so much. I feel so honored. Mm -hmm. And um, Ms. Radke is here. <laughs> so I believe she was going to be part of Dr. Brown's administrative update. She just wanted to give an update. She had the parent meeting okay. for the trip. With, and, and Ms. Robinson did say allow some lenient. We, we did say, we, we, I know we did. did. So let's go for it. Let's. Uh, Ms. Radke takes yes. this oxygen. Yes, because <laughs> it, it was part of the presence, even though the, even though it was part of the superintendent, but, but even though she said let's table, but let's go. Is that okay? Well, yes, please. The floor is yours. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Hello, board. I'm Ms. Gadke. I was here last month for the approval of the Euro trip. Um, I just want to give you an update. It was completely full. It full within it was full within 18 hours exactly. You know, for her. Mm. Um, what? Really? Families there, <laughs> over 100 families there in a standing room in the South Commons, um, and there is still so much buzz about student travel domestically and internationally, so I'm hoping that with this trip that it can hopefully set something off with Brown Deer with traveling more in the future for our students. Okay. That's amazing. That's yeah, that's amazing. Like, any other trip that yeah. I would like to, but I'm kind of working with a principal run at the moment with looking at possibly doing a domestic or international trip for 2026. Okay, let's let's, let's try maybe uh, like Japan or something like that or whatever. <laughs> I, I want to take my students to places that I have been for just for the parents' peace of mind, knowing that I felt comfortable there and that I would like to take my students to a very safe place too. Depends on my bucket list. So I haven't been there yet, so I'm mm -hmm. like <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. So our next item of business is the approval of the 2024-2025 4K instructional calendar revisions. Who is going to take that? Is that you, Mr. Clemmick? Sure, to give you the default. Um, there were just a few minor changes uh, after some additional uh, suggestions from the 4K staff. So um, we presented that this is not just only affecting the K4 calendar. Um, I believe the changes included um, um, creating a couple of teacher work days on September 3rd and 4th, and then September 5th and 6th being the first days for students and their A and B days. And then the first, K, first day for all students would be September 9th. 4K students are under a much lower um, uh, hour uh, um, requirement than the K-5s with the rest of the elementary school. So they have more uh, allowability for, uh, for days. So um, this just helps prepare the, uh, the teachers and have everything ready to go for, for those students. So that, those are the recommended uh, changes. Yes, I get it. It's really late. Labor Day is early this year, so. And then if they would go out to the regular end of the school year. Uh, they get out a little earlier. I'm trying to, uh, let me see. Um, so I think their last day is like that. Fourth. Was it the fourth? No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Fourth. Sorry, I was looking at. June 11th. Uh, no, no, it looks like they're out at St. Yeah, this. Yeah, they look like June 11th. The last day is actually the 10th. The teachers are there till the 11th, so. Yeah, because usually um, that first Monday wouldn't be until like the 8th or something for Labor Day. But since the month starts on the 1st, that would have made them start earlier if it was stuck to that Labor Day. So any any changes, anything that we need to do to pay for a calendar? And obviously, um, we haven't registered 4K students yet, so we can address me before we start. All right. Uh, anybody like to make a motion? Just a, one other point of clarification, and it has to do with uh, we built in that time for election, too, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, those yeah, are still, that was on yeah, right those PL days are still that there. That happens there. Okay. Yeah. November 18th, April 1st, and um, November 5th. Okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Beto, I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2024 25 4K instructional calendar revisions as presented. Thank you very much, Ms. Megan. Motion has been made. We have a second. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor would raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, motion carries six, I mean, seven to zero. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's go on to our next item is, we've done everything except for G, correct? Yeah. All right. Let's go to item number G, the superintendent search update. Oh. All right. So we have been, as a board, we have been having a wonderful time in relationship to our superintendent search. Quick background information. We had 22 candidates that applied for the position. We broke 22 candidates down to 10. Those 10 individuals, uh, 11. 11, I'm so sorry, 11, uh, where we had uh, Spark interviews, which were video interviews, and, and those candidates uh, did those. Then we met uh, two Saturdays ago, and we broke 10 down to five. And this uh, Saturday, we just interviewed those five candidates, and now we have our finalists. So our three finalists are Dr. Catrice Cotton, Dr. Kiana Jones, and Mr. Matthew Boswell. So School Exec Connect has been instrumental in helping us do this and being able to help us along in this process. Uh, I'd like to be able to shout out the administrative team here, uh, Donna and Trina and Amanda and Dakota and the rest of the administrative team in this whole thing and us being able to do this search. So Saturday, March 16th is going to be the finalist interview, but there's a three tier approach to this. We're gonna have the community forum. So one finalist will be doing the community forum and the community forum, that'll be where the community can come in, students, teachers, administration, community members, anybody can come in and the candidates will tell a little bit about themselves, a little bit about their experience, education, their background, their passion for education, and them being able to answer some questions uh, that came from our uh, community survey that went out. So some of the major things that people were looking for in relationship to our next superintendent. Another one, another member will be doing an interview with the, their final interview with the board. And that third person will be doing a tour of the facilities. All right. And then what they'll do in an hour, they'll switch and then they'll switch. So we're looking at from 10 to 1 on a Saturday, probably trying to hold it in the, um, uh, the commons area in the, in the middle school. Like, what do you think? The middle, that middle school where we were having the uh, board meetings before, so that way we can set up to, just because we don't know how many people are going to be there. So either we can set it up there, or we can set it up in the library, one of the two. But that that information will be coming out. Uh, the press release and other social media and other media outlets. Uh, this announcement for the three finalists will be going out by Thursday. So it'll be it'll definitely be a part of our website uh, going out to the village to be able to publicize. Uh, potentially, um, the, uh, what's it called? The North 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 Shore now being able to go there. Potentially the journal, uh, potentially the Journal Sentinel, and then of course on the community page, uh, the Brown Deer community page, and, the, and other outlets, local outlets, in order for us to be able to publicize. Um, only thing I want to say is, is these three finalists are great. That's all. That's that. That's all I can say in relationship to this, and I'm quite sure the board can turn around and say the uh, same exact thing. Um, and being a for us to be able to continue to be able to move forward. So I just wanted to let everybody know exactly where we were and announce uh, our three finalists, and all three finalists have accepted to come in for the interview, and they did that uh, yesterday. All right. Uh, is there anything any other board member would like to be able to add? Tough. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. that, that'll do it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. And that is the update on the new superintendent search. Yes. And I and I just want to add as well, because we had the visual of the 11 um, candidates, and they were all amazing. Really, really great. Yeah, amazing is a, is a good word for it. And so this has been really a, a tough road for us as a board because between all of the 
professional experience, the education, and what they believe that they could do here in Brown Deer, it's, it's been tough. And so we're down to the top three, um, but it was a tough time getting there. So I just want that out there for those that did not make the top three, for them to be aware that this was a, this was a tough, this was a tough one. Uh, any, any, anyone, any other board member like to add anything? Uh, I, I just still want to be able to discuss with the team, uh, the potential of maybe changing the flow of the day so that we can have more um, exposure there, but I will, we can talk about that later. All right. All right. Let's go on to our next item, SWSA and legislative update. Um, the full membership meeting is going to be Tuesday, March 12th for the SWSA. And there's a million different things that are going through legislation. I'm quite sure everybody is actually getting a, a lot of that information in relationship to that. There's nothing that has been approved as of yet. But, of course, the big things are Act 20, um, four-year-old kindergarten is a, big, is a big thing that's on there right now. Um, and so there's just a multitude of different things that are going on. You know, right now, this is that time. It's a hot bed for legislation right now. So just getting, then giving you a quick update on the SWSA. Why well, the update? Uh, All right, thank you. Yeah, hey, you're pretty much in the same boat as the SWSA. There's just a well, million things. Yeah, it's coming. Right, right. And I think only other thing was is there was a lot of conversation in relationship to the redistrict, redistricting of the map yeah. and exactly what exactly does that mean uh, to constituents and everything else like that and stuff. So again, more information to be able to come. All right, uh, Ed Foundation. Uh, we're just getting ready for scholarship season. Um, so the application will be released soon here and the students will have about a month or so to apply for that. So. That's where we are with that. All right. Thank you very much. Parks and Rec. Um, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec's director is going to be going on maternity leave in like April. So we got introduced to the new staff. There's the new supervisor, Ben, and a new, um, also a new person. Her name is Zoe, and she's going to be in charge of a lot of the summer programming. And um, sorry, I was at the special events video on that, so I kind of get the two mixed up. But something really exciting that that the rec department did was the Black History Month artwork. Um, and I judged that, and the pieces were excellent, the ones that were there. So that was really good. But the Park and Rec's, they're just pushing in the direction of, um, huh? well, they talked about getting an ice skate, a mobile ice skating rink to set up kind of by that public house. But with the weather, um, they found a group that had actually had the ice rink. It's a portable one and they wanted to set it up over there. But I think with the weather, it just the whole thing wasn't going to work out. So um, I know that they're working on getting some more programming ready um, and the pond updates. I think that's the summary. Okay. Because isn't the spring, shouldn't the spring magazine be getting ready to come out? So. I mean, summer. summer yeah. yeah, they're doing the summer. Yeah, actually, sure. we're working on it now. So they're working on it, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. And that is the end of the report. So now let's go on to item number seven, our board planning calendar. I do want to add a, a date in here, and which is for tomorrow. Uh, and that's, that's something that's actually really dealing with the, the village itself, uh, the first and the first ever Black History Program in the village. It's tomorrow night. The library, right? Um, yes. Uh, it's, the, it's the Black History Program. And uh, so it's going to be the first one, and it is tomorrow night. I saw that in the paper. It's in the Journal Sentinel. I saw yeah. that. Okay, March. Yeah, yeah. I, I just yes. saw it. Yeah. They did ask uh, people to pre-register, so if you haven't, you yeah. may want to see if you still can. Um, it, was full. it will be honoring. Uh, oh, it's full right. online. I registered today. At about four o'clock. Right, I'm glad. You called the village. Oh, you called. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I, I'm hoping that some board. I, of course, I can't go tomorrow because I'm on a plane first thing in the morning. But I would love it if, if some board members would be able to go and just kind of just represent. And plus, on top of it, I guess they're going to be food and 
some music and some other things or whatever and stuff. So probably a really, really good event to be able to bring uh, family. Yeah, so, as well, too. well, no, so there, no kids, no kids, no kids, no kids, no kids. Yeah, so, limited. Space. Yeah. yeah, so it will be honoring um, a few Brownder residents, um, business owners. Uh, it will be it said light refreshments on the flyer, but it's actually being catered by Perkins Boys on, on the grill. So, I think it should be a, a good time. Yeah, okay, great. All right. Okay, so March 6th is the uh, school board symposium at Lincoln Elementary School. Now, again, I don't know if the uh, site is going to change again because this is like the third change for the site. So right now we're at Lincoln uh, Elementary School in Wauwatosa. So, so we have individuals already signed up. It's on Lincoln Street. It's Lincoln Elementary School. Okay. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, they changed again. So, again, this is like the third change for the site. Uh, next is March 15th is a PD day. So no school, the 19th, regular, our regular board meeting. 21st is the uh, Brown Deer Parent Resource Fair at 6.30. The 25th through the 29th is spring break, so there is no school, all right, and no board meeting. And April 1st uh, is no school, and that's not an April Fool's. Uh, <laughs> April 2nd is professional learning day. The 3rd, school resumes. Uh, the 9th is our special board meeting. Uh, at 6 p.m. And then the 23rd is our regular board meeting. And that 23rd board meeting will be the board meeting for our new uh, board members. Nice welcome. Cool. Easter break. Yes. Or spring break. Yeah, whichever break you want to call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and April 2nd is also. Yep. So uh, with that being said, is, does anybody else have any other dates that are extra important that they don't want to be able to add or have some uh, say anything about? I didn't realize those extra dates while I'm at the end of spring break. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We, are, we are going to do a literacy night, our second annual literacy night. is going to be um, May 21st, if you want to put it down. Um, we have a uh, an author coming, um, so we are going to, to use some some funds to, um, to pay for um, our special guest, um, Baptiste Paul, is... Um, is a children's author, and um, so he's going to come and do a read aloud. We're going to have uh, formerly our very own Dr. Stacy Gray come and do a parent information session on um, early literacy, um, explain a little bit of Act 20 to parents, and some of those things that we're going to do kind of like we did last year, but hopefully on a bigger scale. The book fair is going to be going on. The book fair will be going on at the same time? Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be held at the elementary school this year. We thought every other year we'd, we'd swap it back and forth and just kind of get parents um, around. And then we are going to have some foods and crafts. It is going to be 5.30 to 7.30. Um, we'll have some... Uh, good old-fashioned hot dogs and buns and some chips and, and stuff like that. So we're going to do food and snacks, and we'd love for you all to come and see and, and enjoy. What's the day? That I was going to it's, it's uh, May 21st, but what day of week is that? It's a Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. And there, I hope there's not a board meeting. So, okay. but I think it, I think we tried to figure it out. So, but we'll, we'll see. I think no we board, board. You for yours? No board meeting. Okay. No board meeting? Okay. 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 So, um, right, it should be the 28th, right? So, um, so yeah, so it'll be the 21st, 530 to 730. It should be lots of fun. We're going to do some crafts and advertise resources and books and all sorts of good stuff. Kids are planning on doing some book walks, and it should, be, it should be a great time. And this is in collaboration with the, um, the parents. Um, so last year, if you remember, we worked with the family engagement team, which is Part of that D, uh, DPI uh, parent literacy collaboration, so so they're going to help uh, do do some fun stuff with us as well. So it should be a good time. So, okay. um, one other event that that should be noted is the fun fair. Yeah, we're trying, and that's yes. April thirteenth yes. from ten to three. April thirteenth. Right. The fun fair is returning. April thirteenth. It's going to be in the field house for the return. From what time? It's ten to three. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just—I thought I put it in my calendar when I saw it today, but I didn't. So I was trying to pull it up oh, yeah. and make sure I had the right date. Man, I love the fun fair. Like I've been going to fun fair since I was in fifth grade at D. Cakewalk is coming back. The cakewalk is coming back. Yeah, I remember I won the cakewalk seventh grade, and I pulled around and was driving my bike back home. 
Rock the cake. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had like you know, you know, you had your bike, I had ten, and you you had that uh, uh the bar there in the back or whatever. Hey, so I had it there, and I thought I had it on there real good. And before the the you know where like where the library is, where the sidewalk is. Well, back then there wasn't a sidewalk that was right there. It was kind of it was kind of um, rocks and stuff. And so I turned around and did that and did one of these and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never forget mm -hmm. it. It was German chocolate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still have it. So I think you. I think you should. I think you're you're due for a German chocolate cake. I yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just one of those those traumatizing moments of my life coming up or whatever have you. Exactly. The full rocks like this. Yeah, man. Please. All right. Okay. Blow it off. Yeah. All right. Second room. All right. Exactly. All right. Okay. So now we are on to our number eight is our motion to roll call vote to be able to go into closed session. Would someone like to be able to make a motion for us to go into roll call vote and go to closed session? Dr. Vito, I would love to make a motion to enter into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes 19.851 CE. G, the Board of Education may move into closed session for the purpose of A, discussion of the 2024-26 administrator contract contracts, B, deliberating, deliberating regarding negotiations slash bargaining, C, conferring legal counsel regarding litigation, and D, Motion and roll call vote to return to open session to announce or take action, if any, and if appropriate. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion has been made. We have a second. Second. Thank you very much, Ms. Bacon. Motion has been made and seconded. All right. Uh, let's go to roll call vote. Beetle. All right. Daniel Bachelet, aye. Macon. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Robinson. Aye. Walker. Aye. And Zick Washington. Aye. And the vote is seven to zero to move into closed session at six. Fifty-three. 53. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Big world record. All right. Thank you very much, everyone that is online with us. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. Enjoy the remainder of this beautiful, beautiful evening. If you can't get out on your patios or on your decks for this one before uh, tomorrow, and it's yeah, going to be right. twenty degrees outside. <laughs> So enjoy. Good night, and thank you so much. Good night. Yeah. Now go. All right. No. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. All right. We've gone back into open session at eight oh one p.m. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve the administrator contracts for 20 to do the 24 to 26 school years? I will make a motion to approve the administrator contracts uh, as presented for the 24 to 26 school year. Thank you very much. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Um, second. All right. Thank you very much. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor, but raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries 7-2-0. And would someone like to make a motion? So adjourn. Hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. You're giving me the, hold on for a second. Yeah, because um, if we could return back to the superintendent search, I'd like to talk about scheduling for that public day. Okay. So, I had uh, mentioned the point of trying to ensure that we are part of the community forums. So I wanted to, there is a way that we can be able to do that. If we start earlier and stagger it differently. Well, let me say, do you want me to just discuss this with you first, Dr. Beadle? Yeah, because I got to turn around. I got to talk back with school exec because they actually already kind of had that other piece set. So. Yeah. So if, so if you can just talk to me and then okay, to I'll show you what I had in mind. Okay. I mean, if if our intent is just not what's said, can't we just videotape that session? Those sessions, and we can just they're already going to be videotaped. And and what we're doing, we're doing the QR code thing, so we'll get all of that information from everybody that was there, and then they can be part of our discussion when we. How's it going to be recorded? I'm trying to figure out how it was the last time because I I was there. We weren't the of. 
I thought the board was there. Everybody wasn't there. No. I was. I know I wasn't there. I don't remember With that. the community, right. I wasn't there. there. I, was I there. could have swore that the board was all there during that time. I think we were. I think I was doing interview. I think we were doing interviews. I don't because think it happened I, like that that day that, that time where it was all at once. So, okay. mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, you so that's gonna be okay. So, all right. Yeah. All right. So, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. Miss Walker, thank you so much. Both okay. have been made. Do we have a second. Second. All right. Thank you, members of Bacon. All right. Motion is made. A second. Uh, all in favor, raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Here see them. Motion carries unanimously, seven to zero. I call this meeting adjourned at eight o five p.m. Thank you, ladies, for your time in this evening, and thank you, everybody that enjoyed uh, that joined our school district of Brown Deer School Board meeting. Thank you very, very much, and have a wonderful evening. Good night.